Hey Trina in Charlotte, North Carolina, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and first of all I just want to thank you for your patience while I got this shipped to you. You've been great, you've been super, so here is your video. Let me show you how I cut clear lenses with anti-glare coating for your Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfair color 901, the classic shiny black and the 55 eye size. Let me begin. I'm going to take your frames out of the original packaging. This is your Italian leather Ray-Ban New Wayfair case. Mm, smells like Italian leather. Your Ray-Ban frames, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, and this is how Ray-Ban sends them to me with the little plastic sleeve on the left temple. And if I'm going to grab my little stash, if they think it's a good idea to, they put that on there to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping. But if they think it's a good idea to send more one, where I'm going to put a second one on there, I can do it, I can do it. My depth perception's thrown off. Come on now, there we go. I'm going to put a second one on there when I ship to you, just two and a half hours away by car in Charlotte, North Carolina. Of course, I'm here in the Bull City of Durham, North Carolina. I'm going to pop out your original heavy glass lenses that come into your frame, and your frame is now going to weigh about at least a half or maybe even a third of its original weight. But I'm going to put your Italian frame into my Italian Santa Nelly. LE 1000 patternless edger and the stylus is going to pop up and trace the shape of the right lens and then it's going to move over and trace the shape of the left lens here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality you buy a frame and you get free clear single vision prescription or non-prescription fashion lenses which is what you did this time you've got the geek chic look forgive me for saying so the naughty librarian if that's the case either way your friends are going to be so jealous of you when you start rocking these things so i've pulled up the shape of your lens onto the computer if these were a prescription i'd put in your pupillary distance now but they're not so i'm going to put in just have it match the frames these are polycarbonate lenses that i'm going to cut on the soft cycle due to the anti-glare coating and this is a xyle frame which is an old school name for plastic and I know from experience that the 55 has a deeper bevel than the 52 that I wear in the tortoise beige today. And so, I am going to take it down just a little bit because I just know that the, as I just explained, the bevel is deeper on the 55. So I usually have to take them down. I'm going to do it in advance. So these are your lenses before I begin. I'm going to take them out of their protective sleeves, put them on the counter, toss those. Now this is a block that is going to hold your lens into place on the lathe while it is cutting. I need to stick this onto your lens. So believe it or not, 3M, the same people, oh it fell inside the box. The same people who make post-it notes make stuff, well I guess for every profession, but definitely mine in the optical world. So they have a little double-sided sticker and the black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that onto the block. I'm going to pull the tape away to make my side sticky. And then I'm going to stick this onto your lens, just going to get it centered, and we're good to go. I'm going to do the same thing for the left lens. Pull the little sticker off, put it on the block, pull the tape away, and now stick that on the lens. Now I'm going to explain what the, high, what the anti glare coating does in a moment, but in the short term, I'm going to mention that it's also a hydrophobic coating, meaning that it hates water, just makes it a little bit extra slippery. So I'm going to put another little adhesive sticker on the back side to prevent it from slipping while it's cutting and the nice thing about that hydrophobic coating is that you'll never have to purchase a wet cleaner again the Ray-Ban cleaning cloth that comes in your case is all you will ever need to clean your lenses plus I'm going to provide one of my own premium microfiber cleaning cloth so you'll have two and that's all you'll ever need to clean your lenses so I'm going to put your lens into the chuck and hit start of course I like to call it the Charles because I don't know the machine well enough to call it Chuck even though we spend 12 hours a day together. But nonetheless, the calipers are going to come down and trace the back surface of the lens, the concave surface, which is closest to the eyelashes. Then it's going to move over and trace the front surface, which is the convex surface, which sits away from the face, all the while measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly where to place the bevel. The actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom left. It is that lighter color wheel that's like a heavy grit sandpaper that's going to grind away your polycarbonate material until it's the final shape in this wheel in the center with that little channel, that little valley. And that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. And you are going with the classic 901, the classic shiny black. This is the, the standard bearer of every color. 
I did have to close the door due to the sound, but one thing I'd like to talk to you about your anti-glare coating. I mean, I stock thousands of lenses in every prescription. The purple or the anti-glare coating, the green lenses do not have the coating. But anti-glare is three features in one. It, it eliminates glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. But it also eliminates glare from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead lights, fluorescent lights. The second feature, it's a reflection free lens. So it makes for much better eye contact. If someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses. Or if someone takes a picture with the flash, you won't see the flash lit up in the lens. You'll see just your eyes. You can see how the fluorescent lights reflect off of the lens in, in this hand and they don't off of yours. And the third feature that I like is that it comes with the best scratch protection, the best scratch coating in the business on top of your anti-glare because they want to protect your anti-glare coating. Let me get rid of these. I'm going to put those up there. So, Trina in Charlotte, my birthplace. I was born at Charlotte Memorial Hospital. That's what it was called back then on November 21st of 1966. In fact, we just had May 21st a couple days ago. That was my half birthday when I was a kid. I always look forward to May 21st because I can tell people I'm seven and a half. Of course, that's after being born in Charlotte. So if you notice, the lens is completely flat. It was like a nickel that would stand up on the counter, and now it's getting the bevel on the lens. And I love it when I can pull a piece of little optical sawdust off like that. There is water running in the background, but polycarbonate cuts dry where plastic and high index cut wet. In just a moment, water jets will kick in to wash away any optical sawdust that may be on the lens right now. And polycarbonate, by the way, there's three different lens materials. There's glass, plastic, and polycarbonate. Glass, which is heavy glass, and if you drop it, it will shatter. That's why you only find it in sunglasses and no one wears it in prescription nowadays. Plastic is the other alternative. It's the least expensive lens. Polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable. Trina, your lenses are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin from overexposure, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive. But you now have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. You never have to worry about any eye protection now. Where sunscreen you have to reapply, you never have to do that with your lenses. It is on there permanently. And before I try and mount your lens, the two things I want to do, one, dry it off. I mentioned it's a slippery lens, so while it's wet, and the reason why you never need a liquid, that hydrophobic coating, it's just like when you wax your car and, and, the, and it rains, it beads right off. No matter what liquid is on your lens, it's going to bead right off now. Um, so that's why no liquid cleaner is ever needed. Um, I, although I will include instructions on how to care for your Ray-Ban case and cleaning cloth frames and even the cleaning cloth that I send you so it'll last you for years. But the last thing I want to do, you still have some rough edges that are left over from the cutting process. So I want to use my hand stone, which is completely flat. I can put my finger on it while it's running and my finger gets warm because of the friction, but it is that friction that allows me to smooth out the edges of your lens. Now, if you see this little white powdery substance that's on the edge of your lenses now that I'm scraping off with my thumbnail, it's called Schwarf. And I do this so much, I've worn a V-shaped bevel into my thumbnail. My friends call it my occupational thumbnail. But I do this all day long, and once I get it all off of the lens, I collect it here on the counter, and very neatly and very carefully, I wipe it on the floor. And this is where I say, kids, stay in school. I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess like that. So if you want to grow up and make a mess, kids, you got to stay in school. So I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner. First to see if it fits, and then using my thumbs at the nose, I press down and it snaps in perfectly because I did take it down in advance. I do this so much, I'm very familiar with this frame. Um, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to cut the left lens now. I'm going to put it in and hit start. And should you ever want to change your lenses out, it's no problem. Again, you have unbreakable lenses. You're never going to hurt your lens by popping them in and out. And I'm going to slow it down and do that for you. I'm going to wait for this to wait for that to finish cutting. I start cutting and then I'll go ahead and explain. So there's a restaurant down there called The Penguin. I went down there, one of my wife's friends, that's right, my wife, one of my wife's friends lives down there and they took us out to eat there. 
you know, good burgers, that kind of spot, bar and grill type place. But they had some fried pickle, fried pickle mm. chips, slices, not the spears. And they kept trying to offer them to me. Here, try these. And I said, no, thank you. I'm not a pickle person. And they were just persistent. No, you got to try them. You got to try them. And I tried to tell them, no, look, I don't like pickles. I probably don't like them fried. So there's no need for me to even try them. And they were just so persistent. No, you just got to try these. They're the best that there is. And so to shut them up, I tried one. And oh, snap, it was good. So I got a burger with fries. And I insisted they take the rest of my fries and let me eat their pickle chips because they live in Charlotte. I'm two and a half hours away in Durham, and so my wife and I have made day trips down to Charlotte just to go to the Penguin and eat pickle chips and then drive back home, where we like to do a lot of day trips here in North Carolina. So your lenses, let me take this off, and uh, that, that block is no longer needed, nor is this little blue sticker, so I'm going to pull this off. I do want to use my optical grade acetone and clean off any residue that might be on the lens from the adhesive stickers. And then I'm going to dry it off and inspect it to make sure that, and while I'm this close, let me show you the cleaning cloth that I have in store for you. Let me get it out. Let me get it out. This is it. Bull City Optical. I'm going to get you a pink cleaning cloth. In fact, let me pre-test it to make sure it works. You know, because I don't want to send out a defective cloth. I'm going to pre-test every one just for you to make sure it works. Sorry, my own little humor. The clown gets to laugh. Hold it up to the light. That is perfect. No blemishes. I'm going to put this back in. So in order to mount the lenses, if you ever get sunglass lenses in the future or prescription lenses, the way to mount these is I have the frame upright. I tuck it in at the outside corner. And using my thumbs, I just press down at the nose. It snaps right in. If you ever want to remove the lens, I flip the frame over where the temples are up and the lenses are pointing down. I'm right-handed, so I grab the frame with my left hand. I place my thumb. It's always with the thumb. It's always at the nose. You're always going to press down with your thumbs. But I have the thumb there getting ready to press down. I put my knuckles on the outside of the frame and kind of torque it. You're not going to hurt the frame and you're not going to hurt your unbreakable lenses. But I put my other thumb on top and just push it downward. Out it comes. And again, to, I rotate it to turn it inward. Now, in order to mount it, I'm not trying to reach over the frame. I like to work on the side closest to me, so I rotate it, and I tuck it in at the outside corner, and then again, using my thumbs, I press down at the nose, it snaps right in. So, I've been having my patients do this for years. I wear this frame in 10 colors. I have one set of prescription lenses, and I pop them out every day, depending on what I'm wearing. This is a discontinued white. This was actually one of my first colors. Here's the blue rubber. Here's the blue crystal that I wear. So, and here's my University of North Carolina basketball poster that I have up here on the lab, even though I'm just a couple miles away from Duke. So, take this out, dry it off, back to the handstone, back to the safety bevel. And because my wife hates it when I make a mess here in the lab, in her honor, just this one time, I'm going to throw away that your little optical debris in the trash can. But I want you to see why I wipe it on the floor and I don't throw it away. I want you to see how far I have to go. So I'm going to collect it all and I'm going to put it in my hand. Now follow me. This is going to take a long time. I'm going to walk to the trash can. There. You see why I throw it on the floor? Isn't that much easier? Who has time to go that far in the course of a work day? Sorry, honey. That's why I make a mess. Okay. And I blew it. I miscut your right lens. I miscut it. Okay. Time for show. Back. Let's cut another lens. I was sitting there babbling. Let me grab one more lens, flip it over, and cut the left. The left. The left is going to be cut. Okay, you get the extended version. I apologize here. Let me stick that back onto the lens. Let me get another one of these stickers ready. I'll throw it away. It's still on the back of this one. I will recycle it. I will save this one for the future once in case someone needs it. Look at me running my mouth. Okay, left, left. That's what L stands for. And start. Okay, so now I've got to stall for a few minutes and improvise while this is cutting. i got nothing left to say. Nothing, I tell you. So, let's see. It is now 7.57 on Friday, May 23rd, 81 degrees in the Bull City of Durham, North Carolina, at least according to my Samsung Gear 2 watch. Hopefully the weather down in Charlotte is nice. Charlotte's a great town. The Queen City, the banking city of North Carolina. 
The good thing this wasn't prescription lenses. I have to eat this one as it is. Actually, because it's non-prescription, I can always resell that to someone else in the future. If that were a prescription, I'd have to eat that lens because there's nothing I can do with it once I miscut a prescription lens. Okay, back onto the cutting wheel. Here I was trying to show you how to pop the lenses in and out um, and playing with your pink cleaning cloth. And to prove this is real, it makes a sound. I couldn't make that sound if it wasn't real. I'm gonna put that up there. So I do include instructions on how to care for your Ray-Ban case and cleaning cloth and the cleaning cloth that I give you. I also include a photo request for you to take a picture or a selfie and send it to me. I was at my barber shop and I saw the pictures on the wall of the hair he had cut and so it gave me the idea I needed to do the same thing. So I started taking pictures of my patients when they came to pick up their prescription glasses and it turned out to be a fun thing for everyone when I'm doing a repair or adjustment it gives people time to look at the pictures and they actually recognize some of the people and it turns out to be a good experience for all involved and by now I have three or four digital picture frames in my office each with hundreds if not thousands of smiling faces on there and because I am a people person I like to talk as you see when I miscut that lens you know the thing for thirty thousand dollars which is what this cost they would tell me hey idiot you're cutting two right lenses but no you know, you got to buy one for $50,000 that'll do that. But anyway, so, because I am a people person now, and, and it helps me identify with uh, the lenses and frames that I send out, I do send out a photo request to have your picture on the website, and that way you can brag to your friends that you're a Ray-Ban model. But it's just a nice way of me to connect with people that I ship to all over the world. And here's the newest one. This just came in today from London, because it'll be a dead giveaway when you see the picture. Oops, hang on, let me pull it up. Wrong email account, wrong email. This one. I love this picture. He's standing here right in front of Big Ben. I stood there in that same spot about 10 years ago and got my picture taken. So it's the same thing. Now, Trina, I don't expect you to have that much 5 o'clock shadow, but if you do, I'm not here to, to, to judge you. So, But I do expect you to stand in front of Big Ben right there on the London Bridge. So, you know, so, hey, chop, chop, get it done. All right, all right. So it is in the last stage here, getting its little optical bath. This is the only time that water actually touches a polycarbonate lens is uh, to clean it off. Trina, I'm just glad that I have a ton more lenses, a ton. These are all non-prescription Plano fashion lenses both with and without anti-glare coating. And these are the same high quality ophthalmic lenses that we have many surgeons here in Durham that do cataract surgery. And as soon as the patients get out of their chairs, they can no longer see out of their prescription lenses. And so the surgeons send them down to see me and I cut a clear lens just like you're getting for their glasses. For one, so they can actually see because they're 20-20 after the cataract surgery and two, this acts as an ophthalmic band-aid to protect a swollen and puffy eye so that nothing could ever come in contact with their eye just within 48 hours after surgery while it's still healing. So back to the handstone, back to the safety bevel, and this time, you know what? It gives me a chance to throw some more stuff on the floor. I was nice to the wife one time. Okay, and since you know what's coming, how about this behind the back? Kids, kids, look at that technique behind the back. Kids, you got to stay in school. How many times I got to tell you? So, all right, let's dry that lens off. Let's get it mounted. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner and using my thumbs, press down at the nose. I'm going to turn it over and using my thumb, I'm going to press downward to make sure it pops out easily so that a novice could do it. And it does. And while it is out of the frame, let me go ahead and take this off and the sticker. I want to use my ophthalmic grade acetone. This stuff is $40 for a quart or 16 ounces. Is that what a quart is? That's just ridiculous, but there's only so many optical shops out there, and that's why the prices are so high. You can buy a four-foot fluorescent light for $2, but if you get a two-foot light, they run about 5 or $6 just because they mass-produce the four-foot ones, and there's so little demand for the two-foot ones. Why am I cleaning that off before I put it in? So there it is again. And we are done. One more thing I want to do before shipping to you. 
I do want to point out that 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them, but I just want to make sure it's in standard alignment before I ship it to you. So if these are too loose or too tight or high on one side, and the reason I say that is 80% of people have one ear that's higher than the other. I'm no different when I put mine on the counter. They wobble, but they sit level on me. So I want to make sure yours are in standard alignment. I'm just going to adjust the hinge so that when I press down, it's in a three-point stance. One, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I press down on the temples. There is no wobble. I flip it over. I press down. There is no wobble. I close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and the same amount of tension on each side, and there is. So that is that. If anyone has any questions about what I can and can't do, although there's nothing I can't do with a pair of glasses other than miscut a lens every now and then, now that there's a witness to it, now that the whole world will see that, it is true I'm not perfect, although I do come very close. Um, but that is it. Trina, hope you enjoyed watching your glasses being made, and hopefully you got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.